Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our course vlogs. We're out here at Mile Square Park Golf Course. We're playing the classic course and this is the back nine. If you haven't caught the front, the link is in the description down below for you. And if you're new to the channel, please click the red button, the subscribe button. I'd love to have you back here week after week. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you like it, let's head on out to the par five tenth hole straight downwind. Let's take advantage. Back to back par fives right here around the turn with that ninth hole and now the 10th, both pretty much will play with the wind. It'll be quartering a little bit, but generally you're gonna have a lot of help on both of these 500 yard par fives. A lot more trouble off the tee here on the 10th hole, left and right, and it's a little bit of a crest here uh, up and over where those bunkers are. A lot of trees have overgrown the fairway, especially down the left-hand side, kind of pinching it down. So if you're down the left-hand side, you're really going to be punching it underneath the trees and uh, avoiding that bunker down the left as well. Now, the bunker up around the green has a very high lip on it, and it's really hiding the back half of the green. So about half the whole locations, you're not going to be able to see where that flag is. You're just going to have to trust you have the number correct. Well, coming right off the birdie on number nine, it's time to launch it. Unfortunately, just like the tee shot on number nine, this was a push right down the right-hand side. And I was in between the two fairways on 10 and 11 here, so just had to kind of lay up here, take it up and over the trees. Yeah, I'm testing the theory that trees are 90% air, and that ball went right through the middle of it, right down the middle of the fairway, and hey, I guess you could call it a perfect layup. A nice 101 yards left to the stick. That's pretty much a full sand wedge for me. Left it pin high to the right. I definitely would have liked to get this a lot closer for a birdie putt, but a birdie putt is a birdie putt. And unfortunately, it rolled that one right through and underneath the camera. Had to push the camera back to show you this five footer here that I need to roll in to validate that birdie on the last hole. And with that par putt rolled in, we're on to number 11. Uh, this is quite possibly one of the most difficult par fours on the entire golf course. Don't let the length deceive you as this is right back into the ocean breeze. If you're playing in the afternoon, there's going to be a club added at least to each of your shots. And coming into the green, this is a severely elevated green, pretty much blind from the fairway. And it's really small and protected on all sides. Most of all, it's protected long by a bank that'll kick your ball down into the river. A nice drive right back into this breeze, hitting a low penetrating shot, trying to keep it underneath the tree level and underneath the wind. Now, while I was playing, I decided to try to use my 64 degree lob wedge on some approach shots, uh, which is not normally something that I do. I typically use that as a little bit more of a finesse shot, kind of when I'm very short sighted. I typically use this uh, this sand wedge for a lot of my versatile shots under 100 yards. And, um, you know, I just left that lob wedge a little bit short there. I had to get up and down uh, for the par and. I'm learning my lesson a little bit that I can't quite hit that club, the number that I like to. The 64 degrees of loft is a little bit unpredictable out of a lot of lies. Now here on the 12th hole, it's a dog leg to the left, wrapping around those two bunkers. And with a big stand of trees all down the right hand side, protecting the boundary line of the golf course, you don't want to go right and go OB over there on the soccer fields. Another elevated green protected by deep bunkers. We're facing a middle hole location today, so it's a little bit more accessible. And with that OB down the right and all of my misses right recently, I kind of overcompensated here. Needless to say, I have missed left on this hole many, many times and know that it's pretty clear over here as long as you get lucky and you're not behind one of these teeny tiny trees. So once again, here I am with that 64 degree wedge thinking I can get it close and uh, I didn't really learn my lesson. I mean, eh, it's close ish, I guess 15 to 20 feet here for birdie. It is makeable. Yeah. But not if you don't get the ball to the hole. Every ball left short does not go in. 
Now here on the 13th hole, it's going to be the shortest par 3 on the golf course, and it's over that little baby lake, protected by big debunkers once again. This is a teeny tiny green, and this uh, this pin is up against a back bank on the, on the uh, green there, so lots of slope to contend with. Now this was playing back into the breeze, and I took a extra club here trying to play it underneath and I just hit a terrible terrible golf shot hooked it short left of the hole and really had to get up and down here for birdie up and down for birdie what am I talking about I had to get up and down for par did not hit a good chip shot there it rolled out here to about 25 feet and had to hit a great great putt to just to save a par Almost got that one to drop. Oh boy, it's okay. We're only back to even par. Let's see if I can get another shot back here somewhere along the next few holes. Now this 14th hole, it's a drivable par four for me. We got the ocean breeze at the back and it's about 290 yards to clear the water from the blue tees. There's a decent amount of trouble up there with those bunkers, but it's relatively flat around this green. so miss anywhere around it, you should be able to get up and down for an easy birdie. Now this is the story of the day today, is the driver is not going straight. It's going left, it's going right, it's sometimes going straight, but here's another one that I just yanked big time to the left. This was pin high of the green, way left and about 50 yards from the flag. Had to get this one down there and almost get up and down for birdie. And just another 15 to 20 footer. We really got to start hitting these things closer. And you got to start hitting your birdie putts and getting them to the hole. That would be nice. Just another comfy tap in par. And we're on to the last par three of the day. And what I think is the most difficult par three on the entire golf course. It's easily the longest 190 yards back into the breeze. If you're facing a back hole location, it's almost, oh, it is definitely over 200 yards. Now, luckily the back tee box was shut down. It was overgrown and being reseeded. So we were playing up a tee box here from a very, very sandy lie and 170 yards to the middle of the green. I choked up on one extra club and just chipped it down right next to the flag. Another 15 footer for birdie. One of these sooner or later is gonna go in the hole. But not that one, I'm just going to rail it on by, four footers coming back, and well, that's another par. On to the 16th hole, and the last hole that's playing down and with the breeze, just under 400 yards. This hole is really playing difficult off the tee because it's blind off the tee. That bunker is at the top of a crest, I'm only going to say it's about 10 to 15 feet tall. It's not like it's it's huge or anything, but it's definitely enough that off the tee you cannot see the green. Just got to send it up and over the hill and get lucky. Hopefully you hit it down the chute there and get a kick forward towards the green. This is another very flat hole uh, green location. All those bunkers around it are very shallow as well. So not too much trouble if you miss the green here. Relatively easy up and down. Now, after playing with uh, some random strangers here for a few hours, I had developed quite an audience. These guys wanted to see me hit the long one, and well, this is the last one with the wind at my back, so I reared back, really gave it my long drive shot, and um, yeah, that thing went about 360 yards down the middle. Uh, trying to get up and down here for birdie once again, but uh, these wedges were my nemesis today. And what do you know? I got another 20-footer for birdie. That might go in, but probably won't, because that's just the story of the day. Alrighty, 17, easily the most difficult hole on the entire golf course. 450 yards of a par 4 straight back into the wind. Playing up and over that same crust that exists on number 16, those bunkers are at the top of the hill, and it's going to be dropping down beyond those bunkers towards that 150-yard marker, bottoming out there by the 100-yard marker and kind of elevating back up towards the green. So you're going to be hitting a shot uphill and into the wind into this long, long par 4. 
plenty of bunkers to protect the green, but in truth, this is just one beast of a hole. But I just came off the longest drive I'd hit all day, so I tried to replicate it, this time into the wind, and it worked. Straight down Main Street, 120, center of the green. I tried to knock down my 140 yard pitching wedge here, and I just yanked it a little bit and got it over here on the fringe. And uh, uh, I'm just gonna keep saying it, another 25 footer for birdie. I have got to hit the ball closer to the hole. Now after all those brutal par fours and back to back to back, you finally get to close with your last par five of the day. It is back into the breeze, but it's a little bit shorter than most par fives, sitting only at 524. The bunkers down the right are death. If you're in those bunkers, you're also blocked out by the trees. And that's a certain layup to around 200 yards, and that just makes this one beast of a hole. If you can get your shot down the left half of the fairway, you'll have a very clear angle into the green, and hopefully you won't have to deal with much of those layup bunkers down the right-hand side. If you miss this hole, you got to miss it short, because long is dead. It's going to kick down the slope, potentially all the way down past the cart path and into the drink. Two drives in a row, and I'm sitting on the 18th hole. Gotta seize the opportunity. That's three in a row to finish, right down Main Street on here on the par five. And with 250 to the middle of the green, into the wind, this is a full three wood for me. Now I almost aim these things out towards the right hand bunkers trying to curve it down back onto the green, hit a beautiful shot right on the front of the green, had a gorgeous look here. Simple two putt will get me the birdie and uh, you know, we're sitting here someday we'll get that eagle right? But uh, we'll spin the camera around here for the birdie putt and uh, let's drop this and shoot in the under par round for the day. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to click the like button down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again next week.